him. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack a gob, it's time for the only news that matters. Now, rock and roll history is no stranger to controversies, disagreements, and clashes of personality, as it appears even Freddie Mercury had a share of hatred in the scene. In a 2003 interview with Gary James, Steve Walsh from Kansas spoke positively about several bands, but his remarks about Mercury were decidedly more crucial. Walsh openly shared his thoughts about touring with Mata Hoople and Queen during the conversation. While Walsh expressed appreciation for both bands, his comments took a sharp turn when it came to Freddie Mercury. He said, Queen and Mata Hoople were fantastic. They are really nice people, except Freddie, the lead singer of Queen. He was an ass. But everybody else was great. All of the guys in Mata Hoopa were fantastic. They were just great to be with. And Walsh went further by calling Mercury a prima donna and a diva, but not in the complimentary sense that these terms often carry in pop culture. He said he was a prima donna, a diva, if you will. That word was not meant to be a compliment, although a lot of people consider it to be. That's bullshit. That's having an ego bigger than you are talented, bigger than you deserve. That's what being a diva is. That's what a prima donna is. And that's what Freddie was. However, the narrative uh, is contrasted with accounts from other Kansas members. For instance, Kansas drummer Phil Ehart uh, narrated an experience about the same tour when Kansas opened for Queen. Initially, there were technical issues concerning stage space and lighting, but once these concerns were voiced to Queen's guitarist, Brian May, the issues were promptly addressed, leading to improved relations between the bands. Following this, members of both bands developed friendly ties. And uh, Kansas Rich Williams also added depth to the story in a March 7th interview. Uh, Williams reminisced about the time Kansas toured with Queen. He spoke fondly of all the Queen members, describing them as great guys. Williams shared how Roger Taylor even provided backing vocals on a Kansas song. Even Freddie Mercury, contrary to Walsh's description, was remembered by Williams as a lovely person. He also humorously pointed out Queen's unique dining habits of constantly ordering cheese with tomato sandwiches. Ew. So while Walsh has his grievances, others from Kansas should shared more positive memories of the time with Queen and Freddie Mercury. All right, well, there you go. Um, Phil Ehart and Rich Williams from uh, Kansas remembered Freddie as a nice guy. Steve Walsh remembered him as a diva. And I don't know which one to believe, but if Freddie Mercury was a diva, I think he earned it. Seriously, the guy is like one of the greatest voices ever. One of the greatest front men ever. The way he would get the, the crown in the palm of his hand and make everybody sing along with him. I mean, man, that, that does something to your ego, man. I'm sure. When you can do a... When you, when you can make a stadium do that and crush everybody at Live Aid. Well, this was before Live Aid. Young, young Freddie might, might have been a diva bit too. And, and it, to me, man, he deserved to be one. He earned it. He has that talent to be one. I wouldn't have a problem with Freddie Mercury. If I ever bumped into him and he was a dick to me, I'd be like, well, well, he's Freddie Mercury. He's allowed to be a dick, you know? I mean, I always said, like, if I was to only like a band 
that was nothing but nice people in the band. Uh, I'd only own Rush albums, you know? Uh, so what if he's a diva? And, you know, uh, Steve Walsh uh, deserves to be a diva, too, because he's one of my favorite singers of all time. My God, to see Kansas and uh, Queen at the same show must have been mind-blowing. And I know by watching the Queen documentary, Brian May is in the documentary, and he talked about that tour. How he was so impressed how they sounded live. He's never heard a band sound like the record or something like that. He just said they had like the greatest sound he ever heard at the time. And he became a huge Kansas fan. And uh, they put him in the documentary. So obviously he wasn't a diva. You know, when it came to 70s Queen and 70s Kansas, I feel their discography back then was just amazingly perfect. Couple of flubs here and there, but man, the the, the body of music, they, they, both these bands released in the 70s. I mean, my very first album I ever bought with my, with my own money, I'm talking about album, because I bought 45 before that, was Left Overture from Kansas, and still one of the most amazing special albums to me. And the same I can say, when I was a little kid, News of the World was everything to me. I loved it as well. I was really into Queen and Kansas. I mean, the first Kansas album, Song for America, Mask, Left Overture, Point of No Return, Two for the Show, great double live album, and The Amazing Monolith. I mean, that's all 70s Kansas, and all those albums are amazing. They're all great. And the same I can say about Queen, Queen 2, my favorite one, Sheer Heart Attack, uh, Day at the Races, Night at the Opera, Jazz, New World Record. Man, they had some great, they had a great run in the 70s too. Was the game, I think the game was 1980, or maybe it was 79. Either way, Live Killers, an amazing live album, man. So. Yeah, I'm just buying my time here, letting you all know about what I feel about these two bands. Yes, it's a story of Steve Walsh calling Freddy a diva, and I think we covered that, right? So let me keep covering my favorite songs from the 70s of these two bands. I gotta go, and just this is off the top of my head. For Kansas, Miracle Out of Nowhere, bam. Uh, the Wall, my God, there's so many. Uh, ooh, Mysteries of Mayhem. Child of Innocence. Oh, I can keep going on. Nobody's Home. Lightning. Uh, not Lightning Strikes. What is it? Lightning. Something off of Point of No Return. And, uh, oh my God. Uh, How My Soul Cries Out for You. Yeah, I'm filling up time here. But hey, man. Kansas fans, Queen fans, listen up. These are my favorite songs. What else from... Uh, oh, I love... Um, uh, Angels are Fallen. All right, and as far as Queen goes, man. You got Orgray Battle. You got Death on Two Legs. Woo! Great King Rat, Liar. Attack of the Black Queen. Oh, man, so many. Uh, dislocate with a, a flick of the wrist of Sheer Heart Attack. Amazing stuff, man. And, of course, you got... Uh, Get Down, Make Love. Should I keep going on? Sure. Dead on Time off, off Jazz is one of the heaviest Queen songs. But, you know, Stone Cold Crazy. That's Proto Thrax right there with uh, Oregon Battle. A lot of people say, oh, Strife started with Symptom of the Universe. Awesome song. Good point. But listen to Stone Cold Crazy. Not Metallica's version. Listen to Queen's version and listen to them do Order Battle off the second album. That's poor Auto Thrash. All right. Is that enough talking? The hell, I love both these bands. I wanted to gush over it. So thank you all for watching. The only news that matters. You all rule. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click that little notification bell. And, uh, you know, like the video. 
Leave comments below. What do you think of Queen and Kansas and A? Well, how do you feel about Freddie? Freddie the Diva? Did that turn you off to his, to their music? Yeah, that's a very good question. Let me ask every, anybody out there that you hear that Freddie the Diva, then you uh, you're like, oh, I don't like the music because he's a diva now. I used to like it, but now that I know he's a diva, I don't like it anymore. Uh, put your comments below how you feel about that, and also. Add why you are stupid. And I also want to thank everybody. I think I thanked everybody, but I want to thank you again. Please, you know, uh, leave leave comments and like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>